Welcome my lovely ladies and gents. My name is Evelyn Wood and this is my show Thrift to Vintage where I take used, unloved, sometimes a little bit daggy thrift store clothes and I transform them into beautiful vintage styled outfits. Today's case is this peasant style, 1930s peasant style blouse is what I transformed not once but I actually transformed this one twice. That's right. So in this video, uh, I invite you into my sewing room to be a fly on the wall, so to say, to watch me go through the whole process of how I transformed this uh, sometime a little bit kind of blah, uh, peasant sort of style top that I found at the thrift store with some inspiration. I transformed it once, but I wasn't quite happy with it. I knew I could do better. So then I revisited it and I uh, continued my transformation into finally the 1930s peasant style blouse of my dreams. So join me, let's go back to the beginning where it all starts and I'll show you what I started with. <laughs> Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents to another Thrift to Vintage episode. If we haven't actually met yet, my name is Evelyn Wood, I'm a dressmaker, sewing teacher and I do a lot of refashioning and I recently did a few uh, quick fixes and you ladies have really been loving the quick fix uh, refashions so to say. So I thought I would continue that because it's a good thing I don't have too much time today. So let's see just how quick this quick one will be. This unfortunate number here is what I'm starting out with. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth are you going to do with that? Evelyn, you've gone mad. Yeah, I don't blame you because... Oh, yeah, right? Like, the length, the... Oh. It's obviously nothing I would wear as is. But let me tell you what I see that this could be. I envision this top as a beautiful 1930s Hungarian peasant style blouse. It's got all the different elements. Refashioning is all about the vision. So this, as I said, it's lovely, lovely soft cotton. Tick. This embroidery is quite nice whilst machined on and it's not, you know, the nicest. I'm certainly going to save myself a lot of trouble by not having to do this myself by hand because I couldn't do this, so tick. The basic style shape silhouette is right, except like this length and this band. But here's the thing. One of the things that I always uh, tell my students about refashioning is to look at the construction of the garment because this one is quite interesting and it's going to allow me to do some quite neat things to it. Let me show you a little closer though. This particular one, when I had a closer look at it, I discovered that it's cheap, cheaply made way is that all of this like uh, elasticated shearing through here is all on a separate band. You can see those two seams here, right? So this is actually a separate band that's been uh, seamed in here. So what that will allow me to do is to basically unpick it. I'm going to leave the bottom on. I want this cute little peplum to stay here. So I'm going to unpick this one, move it up and uh, put it back on and I get a cute little uh, more higher waisted look. I'll probably take it in a little bit and then I'm also going to do some, probably do something with the sleeves to kind of puff these in a little bit and get more of that uh, lovely little shape. I'll come to that last. I'm going to first of all unpick this and see where it gets me and maybe work on uh, taking it in. Uh, unpick first. Because we all know refashioning is at least 50% unpicking particularly when you have to unpick all of the overlocking stitches as well. Being able to look at garment construction and know what you can and can't do does come easier with practice and when you do it more and more and when you deconstruct garments more, it gives you more knowledge of garment construction too. So I've pulled a little apart here and uh, you can see how that uh, shearing band is a complete band and fortunately it hasn't fallen apart uh, as I have unpicked it yet. I think it's going to work. So I have to be quite delicate because there's teeny, teeny, teeny little, little minuscule seam allowance of course uh, in this, but uh, I think, I think my plan will work. I found the magic thread. <laughs> you know that magic thread that when you pull it, it just keeps unraveling and unraveling. Thank you. 
One very important question. Why is there never the correct color overlocking thread on the overlocker when you need it? You know what's happening to these horrible things, don't you? these things. See you too? So first up before I even try this on I'm actually going to run down the side seams a little bit because it seems it sort of bells out at the waist so I actually want it to come in more so I'm just going to do that first. Okay I'm going to make this little peplum smaller as well because I need it to fit my waist nicely and I had a closer look everything is all rectangular this is just a rectangular piece this is just a straight band so I can kind of cheat and uh, take it off one side here so I will be unpicking the seam unpicking here taking in the band taking in the little peplum part undoing the hem sewing those in and then sewing the band back on so it looks nice and neat finished there is no way that I would just run down that whole thing through the hem and everything no, we don't do that. Nice, beautiful finishes is what we want. Even if it's more work. This is all pinned down the sides and <laughs> it hurts a little bit. Okay, so the top is pinned down to about where I want it. I've pinned in this bottom section here. It's completely separate. I want to know that the peplum is the right size and right now, being able to put it on I can make sure that I get this band to sit at my actual waist so I want it to be quite comfortable I still want to be able to move and it sit at my waist so I can kind of test it out it's good okay what do you think is it cuter with a smaller peplum I think it's kind of cuter smaller Oh, I'm going to not touch it for now. I'll do all of this and then put it on properly and then I can decide this if I want to shorten this at the end. But uh, it's just given me a few ideas. This is where fitting on yourself is quite tricky. I'm going to kind of just roughly pin it on where it's sitting on me and then try and take this off. There's about 45 pins in this so it could be quite interesting when I come to do that and then I can actually pin it on uh, properly and evenly and then actually sew it together so uh, wish me luck taking this off I feel like lots of, um, I always hear stories of people when they were young and they used to get, you know, when they were kids and they were pinned in by mom or grandma into dresses and they would always be super scared of like taking them on and off because of all the pins. Uh, I never had that experience, but I imagine this is what it feels like because I'm kind of scared right now. <laughs> the entire waistband and all that bottom peplum is now just pinned on. I actually think I'm just going to do a basting stitch first so then I can actually try it on uh, and just check and then properly sew it. Uh, if I try and do it now it's like stretch all the pins will just like stretch and fall out so I think it's a bit uh, pointless so I'm going to baste it and then try it on to make sure it's perfectly right because I want to get the proportions right and then I can have a look at that hem length as well. <laughs> this is so much less hazardous than the last time I tried this on. I think it would be better just another centimeter or two out so I'm actually good thing I just basted it I'll just undo it and just tighten this up a bit and actually then finish it off and these sleeves uh, are not so bad but I really would like them to kind of puff down and get that sort of rounded puff look so I'm going to try and see if I can actually insert into the hem and use that as a casing some elastic so that it just some really fine elastic so that it will just um, puff in and give that really rounded 30s peasant style look to the sleeves so I'll do uh, this and this and then come back in and have another look to see about this
I used a little three millimeter elastic to actually insert. I was a little bit cheeky and actually inserted the elastic into the hem of the sleeve to create that puffy little look and have no other visible stitching on top. So that worked out really well and I'm really happy with how those sleeves have turned out. I think there is one little thing that I would like to add and that is a little tie to the front here put some little tassels unfortunately I don't really have a lot in the way of tassels in my sewing room I'm just going to use this one and see how it goes a nice navy and something silk and really beautiful would be way better but I just have to use what I've got for the moment and it just needs one little press of course and it should be finished I'm going to finish up. Let me show you how it turns out. Okay, time out. We need to actually talk about something. That's the realities of sewing. As a lot of you may know, I have posted a video called The Realities of Sewing due to this project here. I'll link that video below. Basically, I know this can be better. So I filmed everything as you've seen up until now. Uh, I filmed the outro, the end, the reveal, everything, but I just was, it was just missing that something extra that makes it special. And I knew that I could do it better. I explain more in that video. So do go uh, below and watch that one about the realities of sewing because it is a reality. Sometimes we need to revisit items that we may have called finished to make them perfect. And that's okay. I, my, I could have called it a day. I could have produced that video, put it out, all the comments. I'm sure everyone would say it looks fabulous, wonderful, but that is not what I'm here for. It is my job, what my goal is, is to share my expertise and my experience of the real sewing so that you can learn yourself and be the better dressmaker, be, to, be a better sewer yourself and learn from, from what I'm doing as real life sewing, not just I made something pretty, put it on the internet, here it is. This is how real sewing goes sometimes and you should not feel bad for having to go back and revisit things or think that you could still do better and improve on what you've already done. It happens to everybody. So let's talk through, very important, what do I think I can improve on this? So the biggest thing I was feeling really blah about was this. It ended up being not very fitted. You can see it's actually not like tight on my waist. It's it's kind of, you know, stretched out a little as it's worn or as it's sewn, as everything's gathered into it. And so I can't really sort of take it in more because then I will not be able to get this shirt on. So what I think I'll do is kind of uh, put some elastic, really fine elastic uh, in the seam on the band to kind of draw it in. So it actually puts in more. I was really feeling that it missed the proportions of the 1930s peasant blouse that I was trying to make it look like. So whilst these proportions look fine, like, and it definitely off the rack looks good on myself, I just wasn't loving it. For me, my waist is the smallest part. So I really feel like to get that real 1930s peasant blouse, I really want to make it cropped. So this little peplum at the bottom, I want it to be much smaller, more like the designs that I have seen for inspiration. When I went back and looked, I thought that is what I need to do. So I'm going to trim this off and probably edge this with a nice uh, dark blue, um, in, uh, you know, rolled hem on my machine. And then the other thing that I was really, uh, so I'll do this. The next thing was this. So I, you know, I didn't love this to begin with, but <sighs> I have searched and searched and searched for navy tassels over the probably two weeks now that it's been. Do you think that I can find one? Of course I can't find any nice navy tassels. The only thing I found, and I reluctantly bought them, are these uh, craft tassels. They're kind of navy. So I was thinking maybe they don't have string. Like I really wanted to find a garment that had these already in navy on a tie tassels a little bit of weight so it had a nice kind of drop to be able to tie I just yeah anyway tassels are ongoing story so one thing though I could hang them like this I thought maybe if I close it but there's a problem watch what happens when I close it up 
I thought that could look really nice with the ties, but look at this. Can you see what's happening when I pull this tight? Even though it seems like it's designed that it could close up like this, it's not. So watch this when I pull this out. See how this sits nice and flat now? So this top has actually been designed with this shape. It's not designed like this and it's just sitting open. It's actually been cut out. So I'll have to work with that because otherwise it looks silly. And so I really do like the ties, like a little knot there. So for the time being, I will keep this little knot thing. Perhaps with this and a, a little bit tighter, I'll come back and I'll probably still maybe just keep looking for um, navy tassel ties as I go along. But first port of call. Luckily, I have some scraps left over. So I'm going to first have a see on what uh, rolled hem version will work nicely with this fabric and look good on this design. Make sure I get the colors right. Might try my domestic machine because I only have one spool of thread, so maybe I could uh, do it that way or I'll use my overlocker, but test, test, test. I think it's been a hundred years since I have done a rolled hem on this machine but I still keep my manual because it's the guide. Do you still have your manual for your machine? I hope so. Rather than unwind one of these uh, spools of thread onto three different ones so I can have the same color on all three, I'm just going to put three different ones that are almost the same and just test it first and see how it goes before I unspool and re-spool other threads should I need to. Maybe it works out like this. I'm not going to lie, that was pretty tricky and I think I held my breath the entire time. But I think it worked. Now this is better. See this happy face? This is what your face should look like as you're coming to the end or at least the project is all coming together just as it should. Let me show you. See? Much better! I'm definitely getting those 1930s peasant style vibes now. So I was lucky enough to be able to stitch the elastic and hide it on the underside of the seam so I don't have any elastic uh, rubbing on me. And I think I definitely like it just along the top, not along the bottom too because I kind of like how it kicks out and kind of will help, uh, you know, around the tummy area. So I think that will be fine as it's on. There is one other thing that I think I'm going to do. Can you see that darker line, the facing that's underneath here? Yeah, so it's just, it's faced. You can see it right at the front there. How it's stitched on, it's literally just overlocked and stitched. So there's, it's actually like two separate layers. What I'm going to do is unpick that top stitching and then trim it down and fold it under and just hand catch it so that there is no darker double line where you see the facing from the outside. It will all be hidden underneath uh, this um, navy section here on the embroidery. I just thought of the best idea of how to tie in the little rolled hem that slap the different thread colors, etc. how to tie it into the whole thing the best idea. Should I tell you? I think I'm actually going to make a guess. As soon as you notice it, type it in below. As soon as you notice it, we'll see maybe who gets in first. I'm not sure how we'll measure that, but. So let me show you the reveal and then I'll come back and uh, talk to you about what I decided to do at the very end to tie it all in together.
this. This is what I had in mind when I originally set out to transform this peasant style blouse. Let me take you through, wait, who guessed? Who guessed what I added? I'm going to check the comments and find out, but if you didn't realize, these, yeah. So I thought of adding the little strip of, uh, basically I edged it the same as I did uh, down the bottom here and just added a little strip uh, to the sleeve edges so it kind of has that uh, shirt gathered in look as well and it just kind of repeats that slightly darker thread down the bottom uh, so it all ties in just perfectly and it really mimics that uh, 1930s peasant style and that smocking that would, should be originally there if it was an original. So for me that just took it even one step further and just really made it oh, perfect. So perfect. I still do not have navy tassels here but now that the rest is looking like this, this doesn't bother me so much. And I did make these a little bit uh, bigger, so they are a little bit better. I will keep my eye out for the perfect navy tassel to add to this, but if you have one, let's talk. All in all, I am so happy with uh, the fact that I went back and refashioned my refashion because it was so worth it. This is definitely what I had in mind when I started and it is sometimes it just takes a little bit more. It takes putting it away aside, some new ideas and just revisiting what you've already done because it is always a process. Sewing and designing is a process. I would love, love, love to hear your comments down below. Let me know what you think of this refashion and maybe what I should do next time even. If you have any questions about any particular part of it, let me know in the comments below. I love reading them. Like this video if you liked it. And really importantly, if you found a lot of value in this, I would so appreciate if you shared it with your friends because it helps spread the message and uh, my content out there about refashioning and repurposing things so we can all get new creative ideas on how we can reuse and recycle the clothing that we already have without having to buy new things. Check the links below for more fun videos to watch and to learn how you can further learn to sew with me. And until next time, bye. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Success. <laughs> There's only a couple of holes in me. Now that is living dangerously.